And um, I think this will be a pretty interesting session. Um, you know, I I think I'm kind of the the guy who's there for the simple stuff, but I think the simple stuff works a lot of times pretty good and kind of has a stable um, environment. And uh, so, you know, usually I say buy at market, sell at market. So the next day or the next bar, whatever it is, that's usually my mantra because it gives you time, you know, if you have too many orders or, um, you know, you might want to think about things. You know, I'm not saying I'm not training the system, 100, not 100%, but sometimes, you know, there's times where you want to think. And um, so most of our strategies are based on that, that we say buy at market, sell at market, and the indicators in between um, that maybe trigger that um, event kind of. So, uh, and and I... I actually did a YouTube video on the MFI, I think. And, um, you know, and I was going the, when I originally started, I was going with the MFI crosses under 10. Okay. And I used the, um, the two day period because I think I, I wanted to have a, obviously a, a short one going in and out. And, um, so that was the original buy at market MFI crosses under 10. The calculation of the MFI, actually, I did have it somewhere because we have an old wiki page, uh, but I don't want to switch windows now. You you can get the calculation of the MFI. There's different calculations. There's two, actually. Um, but we used, obviously, the one with the volume. And um, it's... It's kind of pretty, it's kind of simple, I would say. Uh, it's uh, you can look it up if you're interested in the mathematics behind that indicator. Which yeah. With. Who's the who's that? Sorry. What who's is Did anyone uh, have a question? Yeah, uh, just so if if you have a question right now at the very beginning, um, you can type in the chat so that we can um, then maybe address them because we've got lots of people here and I just don't want to, you know, want to just type them and then maybe Dion um, can pass them on at one point. So the, the video that you might have seen on YouTube using the MFI, um, I think it was the buy at market MFI crosses under 10. And then um, it wasn't using this one. This was the very original one, MFI crosses over 90. Just something similar I did with the IBS um, system a, a couple of weeks ago. And um, the results are actually pretty good as well. You know, if I run them, um, the results look pretty good. It's, um, you know, and here we have it. One second, uh, crosses under back test. I think I have to start this one again as it was. Let me start this one again here. If you play around too much, then sometimes there's too many windows open. So let's open this one again, the pure and simple here. Uh, here we are using the pure and uh, simple, and then we run it. And here you are, 1.1 million, you know, and as long as the spy exists, doesn't look too bad. You know, it's it's kind of, you know, when the boom was there, it didn't do that well. It was going sideways, sideways, and then up again. And then it was kind of okay. And then I think for the, um, the one thing I've done as a change for the... Um, for the next strategy, for the YouTube strategy, was using. Um, um, I was making. I was making one change, and I'm going to show it to you. It wasn't the crossing. It was. Uh, one second, cross B O. Here we are. So I made. I made um, one change, and the change was actually to sell at market at close. That is actually, um, I think this is probably one of this, um, this was a, a big chain, uh, a game changer. And um, this was actually based on some of the communities here in Germany who, who like to, who said, oh, a friend of mine was saying, oh, most of my friends trade at the close. Most of the systems are at the close, which is difficult to trade, as you all know, because um, even on, on YouTube, someone was commenting, 
oh, if you if you trade at the close, you're kind of peaking. And yes, because the indicator only is sure at the closing price. So, and it's difficult to trade sometimes, but if you kind of say, okay, five minutes before the close, and there's a certain timeouts when you can place at close orders, at least with interactive brokers, and Robert, who's on the call, knows probably better. But so if you are five minutes before the end and you say, hey, um, let's, um, uh, I place the order, that is something you can do. Place the order, mark it at close. I think there's a timeout, and Robert, you can jump in if it's five minutes or, or 10 minutes or something. And if you have the data and you say, I'm taking this as the closing price, and if it's uh, good enough, then you can trade at the close. The, the thing is, the, the change that I made was, so ne which is actually this the bar when the indicator happened. Let's take a look at the chart here. Can you see the chart clearly? Um, because I used a different color. Can you see that? Or if you don't, if you cannot see, then I changed the color for that. So basically, um, I'm actually buying here at the open. And the rule is, if the closing price is above the previous high, then we exit at the close. If the closing price is above the previous high, it very often um, is actually the same as the MFI is above the previous high, but sometimes oh, it's actually, yeah, it happened to be here it isn't. You know, the F MFI is not above 90, but you know the close is above the previous high. That's when you exit. It's actually quite a good strategy because even if the market goes down as it does here, you know, you, you get your swings up where you exit. Similar to the 1% um, system um, that um, is actually doing extremely good even this year. I'm going to show it to you maybe later. Um, where the exit is kind of you, you buy 1% below markets open. I'll show you later. But this one is an interesting exit. It gets out really quick. If you use an indicator with a uh, in a small period, it's kind of you kind of want to get the short swings. You're not waiting for ten days or anything like this. Um, so and this is what it does. It actually just says, okay, if the market, even in the down in the downtrend, is going a little bit up or is showing strengths for one bar, that's when we want to get out. And you can actually see it here on the left side, which is all recent data. Um, you know, you're kind of getting out real quick here. You know, you, you have all these quick exits, really quick exits. And this is um, where the strength is of this strategy, I think. So going back here, MFI crosses under 10, buy at market, and then sell next bar market at close. So um, that was the original strategy. And then I did a couple of other changes and um, that was then leading to this result here. And I think this was um, causing some attention. I like to have this way of having both here side by side because it makes it very um, easy to compare the results. If I take away the benchmark here, take away the benchmark, you, you kind of think it's it looks like the same curve, but if you look at the results, you see here 1.1 million and 1. Point, uh, well, it's actually 1.9 million. Actually, I did say that I double the results, but it's not kind of doubling, but it goes up to 1.8 million with this little change that I'm gonna show you. So in between, while we are starting, do you have questions? So far, yep, do I hear someone? So let's um, let's just go ahead and um, create this for a little while. So I'm actually, you know, I'm actually using, or oh, let me use this or this other, this original strategy, the pure and simple. So let's put it here and let's go to the design surface. Something that I really, really like is that I can actually drag things over here. So I can basically say, um, I can use rules that I have in a different strategy here, I can actually use them over here. So one of them is actually 
um, for example, buy at market or no, buy at close, um, which is actually here. So, no, actually, wait, wait one second, one second. I'm actually confused here. We have the final strategy here. So, buy next bar at market. Whoops, here we are. Buy next bar at market. And then we drag this on top. Top. Mm -hmm. Doesn't want to go because I probably my computer is hanging up. Here we are. So buy an expired market if the MFI crosses, and I drag this just over here. I just drag this from here to there, or even from a different strategy, I just drag it over here. And I have the same thing here, buy next bar at market close. But in order to avoid that peaking, we have to use another, this is a power pack um, feature. And we have to use another power pack feature, which actually says, um, oh, where are we? Um, one bar in the future. So I drag this over here. Right. Um, uh, sorry. Yeah, I, you, uh, you have to make it. That's from last night. Oh, someone talking. Um, let me close this one. One bar in the future. Yeah. Might be that my computer. Oh, oh. On the condition, put it on the condition. On the condition, there we are. Oh yeah, you're right, absolutely. So, and here we have the, we have the, oh, well, actually I have to use that other strategy here, which I can actually, I can use this exit, drag it over here and make this exit pause or delete it. So you have the, the opportunity to actually look at different strategies from with different results uh, just by making one small change. And that is buying at the, not only um, buying at the market, but buying at the close. And that's how we get this result here now um, that I was showing you. That's why I was saying in the, in the invite, just by making one little change, this result goes from 1.1 million to uh, nearly uh, 2 million. Actually, one thing that I changed during this presentation before the in the video and the presentation is I excluded the dividends. Earlier I had the dividends in the whole in the whole system, but I excluded those dividends because you know I didn't want to I want to have the pure system running here and not only uh, and not having um uh, the the dividends come up in between. So I actually exclude them. That's why the result is a little bit lower, but it's still 80% more and the average profit has increased to 0.9% as you can see here. Does buy next by market? Here's a question. I'm reading it now so that I can see it. Market uh, at market close place or is using the strategy monitor. Does buy next buy at marketplace orders using the strategy monitor? Um, mm, that one, I guess it has to do with the, the uh, well, Robert, you probably know right away. You see the question? Does buy next buy at marketplace orders using the strategy monitor? Robert, are you there? I am now. Hmm? You don't know? I, I am. I, I'm here now. Uh, no, you can't. You, okay. So, like, you know, like Fulker was saying, you, this this kind of relies on already having the closing price. So you have to have the the closing price and the. Uh, are we? I can't remember if we, are we using just uh, in this in this case we're using the indicator value too, which isn't available until after the close. So, uh, it, this wouldn't be something you could do in the strategy monitor. And even you know, even with a live strategy, they would you would have to run the strategy um, before the close and somehow get the an estimate of the closing price. So you know, we talked about this in, in one of our internal meetings, and I thought we were going to come up with a way to do that, but I I can't remember 
I, 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 rem I remember what we said. We, we were thinking about creating um, a daily data that is um, kind of ending five minutes before the market closes. And then it, you get kind of an estimate, or at least you get an idea whether you um, can um, place or should place the order. So yeah. we kind of play a, 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 a create daily data that is on on today's data, then using the the price of um, five minutes before the close. We yeah. all know that there could be some um, up and down a little bit, but I think that could be a way to do it. And there's another way you can actually um, kind of calculate the. Um, well, we would need the the volume data there too. So, but it is um, it, it's kind of possible with a little bit of a workaround, and we were discussing that. And if Dion uh, wants to jump in, I think he, we had some ideas around that. Um, yeah, if we did talk about it. Something we probably like to introduce in the future uh, but currently yeah it's not possible to trade this in the strategy monitor yeah so it but it, it is because it it kind of you know it's pretty interesting i mean the exit would be probably easy to read because you can basically see oh is the you know if you're far away from yesterday's high um, then that's you know you you kind of can get out of it you know you you can easily see that, but calculating the MFI um, might be a little bit of a problem. But my 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 credo is always if you if there is a, a will there is a way you know if you if you really want to trade it there will be a way to to get it done. And since we kind of all were pretty. Um, um, interested, or we found it very interesting about the results of using closing price. Um, we we were thinking about getting something um, done in that direction, so that maybe we can use it for our own trading. Well, so actually, there is a way to do it. Okay, I mean, you can use intraday an intraday uh, uh, you know chart, and then you know. Get the, right we have a daily. we have a we, we have a daily as of indicator, which actually gives you the so the daily as of at three fifty five in a five minute chart the daily as of close would be the close of that bar. So I mean we you can actually do it, but you'd have to run it in an intraday script. And the thing about the five minutes before the close that's you know that's those are the exchange rules. So uh, to get a, a, a true uh, at close order, you would have to get the order in. Before the, you know, by the exchange rules, I'm not sure if it's a little bit different from NASDAQ, but for NYC, I think it's five minutes before the close. Um, but, you know, you don't necessarily have to do the at close order. You could send it in a, a minute before the close or something with just a regular market order. Anyway, sorry. That's me blabbering again. Yeah, no, you can, um, as Robert said, um, you know, there is always a way, and especially with Valslab, there's definitely a way to do things. Um, so you, you see the two the the two strategies that have the, where the only uh, difference is basically the the entry here um, that makes a big difference, and uh, I mean it, it kind of makes sense because if you buy at the close and we all know that the opening price you you kind of take the overnight risk from the close to the open, and it kind of makes a, a zero point whatever. Um, 0.05% difference if you would only trade buy at the close and sell at the next bars open. But in this case, it's kind of um, extreme because you kind of support it by the indicator, by the MFI, and it gives you a, a much better um, entry and exit point here at, at that time. So something that I want to, you know, let's, let's take a look at the um, and compare. And I think this is really cool. You can compare both results here, and you see that the drawdown seems to be much lower here, at least from the first look. And let's take a look at the metrics on both strategies. This one has a 22% drawdown, whereas this one has a 24, well, not a big difference. Uh, we have the SPY as the benchmark, which has 56%. You can see it much better in the drawdown curve here. You see the the black line is the the benchmark of uh, is the spy, which is our benchmark in our case. Now you can use anything else, 
um, it, it is the same here. And you see the strategy here is um, the blue, the, the, the red one. So you see it is actually the drawdown is much, much, much lower in that case. Another very important thing uh, in my opinion is how long um, am I underwater um, bars since equity high? This is something that is extremely important if you're a trader or even an investor. In the original system, um, the S&P took about 1,800 days before it actually get, went up again uh, from the drawdown. Uh, remember, from somewhere 2000 to 2005 or six, and and then it just got out of it, and then it came in again in an even bigger one. But this time, it only take like um, 1,300 days to get out. This is what these numbers say: the gray, the gray numbers here. And in comparison, you see the green um, uh, pyramids here. Call them pyramids. Um, uh, in the original system, it was also it had one phase about four years where it was actually pretty high, usually way below the the S and P itself. And with a new strategy, it's even better. It didn't even get into that long drawdown. Uh, it actually climbed out of it after basically one and a half year, which is here as you can zoom in here. It's about 410 days. Uh, that was the highest and not like 1400. So even in, in terms of drawdown and how long you are in a drawdown, this strategy was really... Now I'm sorry to break from music. Sorry? Why is that key? Is this question coming from Solar? Is anyone, was, did anyone hear, was that a question or? Um, couldn't hear that. Yeah, I think it's better if you type questions because otherwise I'm getting confused because I, I cannot see who's, who's talking here. Dion, could you see that? I believe it was just a background uh, conversation. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. So, um, you know, if it comes to monthly returns, also, extre also extremely good with just two months here uh, or two years where it was actually down, which was in 2002, the strategy where the market was actually going down a lot. And in all the other years, except 2018, interesting enough, the system wasn't doing as good, even just like the original system. So this year it's already up 14%, not as much as the market, but hey, it's always a question about drawdown compared to um, uh, the, the gain that you have. Um, so what else do we have here? Um, yeah, the periodic returns is also always interesting, especially if you group them by months. You, you can basically see that every month was a good month here. It was never, I mean, in average, that's the average months. So they they all been pretty good. And um, let's go back to the metrics. One thing to look out for is, um, you know, you have 70% winners here. And let's go here too, which is good. I think it always feels good to have a high percentage of winners. If you're a trend follower, you, you lose most, most of the time. You lose probably 70% of the time and waiting for the big trend to come. And here, if you are um, a short-term trader or someone who's buying the dips, um, that's when um, you, you have a, should have a higher percentage in winners, which, you, which we have on both sides of the, the strategies in comparison. And, um, but one thing that you should always look at is, and actually that's up here, is the average profit. The average profit is only 0 0.39. So it's actually not a big difference to this one, 0 0.35. So over the years, this number adds up to that huge gain because you always keep reinvesting, always keep reinvesting the gains that you have. And that makes a, a big Big difference, but I mean, in in comparison, also the the uh, drawdown is also pretty good in comparison. And I haven't added dividends, but I also have not added any fees that some of you might have. Um, 
so that is actually something that you that you should also look at the average profit but it looks pretty good so do you guys have questions please show your strategy oh yeah i didn't show you at uh, the strategy studies oh, no i did show them i think here they are um it's actually buy next bar at market close um with the same entry as the original MFI crosses under, but this time we buy at market close. We're not kind of peaking. We use the closing price of the trading day, and we assume that we kind of have the way to calculate where it has to be so that it becomes um, uh, that the that the uh, indicator is below ten. When we talked about it briefly, kind of possible. And um, this is just so that you can buy at the same bar. Something that we that in the we originally do not allow, as uh, Dion actually wrote on the YouTube channel. I think it was Dion. I'm not sure. Um, so we didn't allow that, but we kind of came to the conclusion that there is ways to do it to buy at the close or sell at the close, and that way we included the feature that you can do it on the same day. Um, so that is the, this here is the original uh, YouTube video system, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And um, this one is the advanced one that I was talking about. Difference here is in the result a little bit is that I have not included the dividends in, the, in both strategies now to give a better comparison on the raw profit of the strategy. Um, you can trade it, uh, oh, the strategy settings, uh, sorry, yeah, here's the strategy settings for both. So it's it's the SPY. Uh, I used all data. I used SPY as benchmark, and um, I used 100% of the equity um, for, the, uh, for each position. I give a little bit. I used the market on close, so that's where the uh, number of shares or ETFs is based on, on the closing price. And just in case I'm using a 1.1 margin factor on this one, the same setting over here. And yes, you can you could possibly trade it on stocks or um, any other ETF or uh, futures. I did not run it on, on any stocks. I mean, I can maybe do it later on if I'm done with this one. Um, I can probably do it. Uh, but I haven't done that yet. Well, actually, you know what I, I always wanted to do, and I'm doing so much on this thing that I haven't done it. So if you guys are interested, I'm running it on the queues. So just to see, I mean, the queues is definitely the market to be in. So um, I quickly do that. Uh, let's open the back test and let's open the equity curve. And we see it's at 1.8. Definitely the queues go um, way higher, I would say, as a benchmark but I'm just running it out of curiosity. And since you kind of asked, is that it already? No, here we are. Wow, that's interesting. So um, what do we have? We have, um, we're running it on the queues. Let's make sure we're running it on the queues. Yeah, it's the queues here. It bought it here, kind of the same behavior, bought it here again, um, had a couple of good trades. And- Does it uh, work on the triple queues? Yeah, I know you're gonna ask that one. Uh, let's let's first analyze that one, and um, let's go, and then we can go to your triple cues. It's it's actually interesting. Wow! And let's let's run it here too, because um, you know the the thing about the cues. Um, this is an ETF. I mean, you all know SPY and cues and all that. So it's kind of the Nasdaq 100 or the S and P 500 kind of. So you don't get those stocks who, you know, you're gonna buy. And, and then they drop 20% overnight. So that's something that um, that doesn't happen on the on these indices, um, ETFs, um, I mean, at least on these two. So I wanna see how that is doing. Maybe it's even doing better now. Let's go quickly. And here we are. Wow, well, it's, it's doing nearly just as good as you can see. I mean, is this now the cues? Am I, am I on the right? Yeah, this is the queues, uh, 1.3 million, one point, pretty much the same. So both strategies kind of work on the queues in a similar way. Let's take a look, metrics. 
we have what do we have as a drawdown, uh, higher drawdown for sure on this one and uh, even here on this one. So the drawdown is definitely higher, but you can also trade it on uh, stocks, definitely. But you have the same kind of numbers, 70% uh, profitable, um, here we have 67% profitable. So we kind of get the same numbers here and we have a average profit, where do we have a position? Average profit is 0 0.49, I like that better because it gives some room for, and this one only has 0 0.48, uh, 45. So that's um, interesting. So this one has actually less, but it had more positions, more trades because it exited earlier. And that's how we can get into another um, position. Uh, oh, why do I have a 1.1 1 .1 1 margin? Because sometimes the, the position size is based on the closing price. So if you say you want to buy 100 stocks at the um, because the closing price was 100, and you, now you put in the order and say buy at 100, um, then and and then the at some progress it's like this. If the market now opens, let's say at 120, and you only have ten thousand dollars because 100 times 100 would be ten thousand dollars, and then it opens at 120, you you couldn't buy them because you were not having two thousand dollars in your account. Some brokers I think adjust it then, and they say, okay, then let's not buy a hundred, buy eighty or something. And some brokers um, say, no, I cannot buy 100, so I'm not buying at all. So we give it some room. And um, you know, on some rare occasions, this might happen. Uh, that's why I have it. Sometimes I use the market open next bar to avoid this situation. So I just have it in. And actually, we can see it, I think. Yeah, we can see it here that sometimes we were using, you see here, margin interest paid. Um, at very rare occasions, we needed to use that. And the margin on interest, if if we ever go into margin, so we actually bought a little bit more than we had money. So that's why you can you can see it here on, on a few occasions it happened. Yeah, gen generally, I mean, if you're using 100% of equity sizing, you're going to need to add a little bit of margin. Otherwise, you're going to miss trades, like Fulker explained. Or you should use a little bit less, like 95%. Uh, to make sure you have enough uh, 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 capital to buy the position that you've sized for. Because remember, we don't know what the open is going to be tomorrow or the close tomorrow. So we have to, so we're, we're sizing the position with the data that we have today. And then we're, you know, that price in the future, we don't know about. So uh, anyway, that's just as a general rule, if you're using 100% of equity sizing, make sure you add a little bit of margin to be able to enter all those positions. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of little, little, little things. You know, um, remember at the beginning I was saying, um, if you compare the results of that YouTube uh, video here, which is basically this one, you're gonna say, hey, wait a moment, there was a different number. No, was it this one? I can't remember, too many open. But, you know, and the reason was that I had um, collect dividends for backtest. Uh, uh, clicked, but when usually when I like you know my my mistake usually when I like to backtest I like to backtest without the dividends because the dividends happen or don't happen, and then they affect the result and the trading a little bit. But I want to get the uh, the the raw result of the strategy, and that's why we are we are not trying to. This is not a dividend strategy. This is a trading strategy where you want to use the times the sideways market. So. One click here and everything, um, uh, not everything, but a lot of things can change. So always look at the uh, at your preference settings. Um, so that's something um, that that you should always look at. I mean, I've got I've got something else for you guys later on. Um, I just want to stick a little bit longer here on the on the MFI and the chart because um, this one is the MFI that buys at the close. And this one is the MFI that buys at the open, as you can see here. This one was uh, clearly a little bit too early, where this one was actually catching the low of that, um, um, uh, yeah, what is that? 
I said, what was that? how do you call that? Is that already a bear market or was that a bear market for, for two weeks or something? It was definitely down like at least here on the queues, 16%, um, I would roughly guess. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but all in all, even though this one wasn't as good as it supposed to be, or but um, and this one was much better, it was all in all the better method to buy at the close. Um, yeah, did I did I miss something here on that? Uh, how many windows do I have open here in the background? Not so many. Dion okay. wanted to see TQQQ. Ah, yeah, Dion wanted to see the TQQ. Okay, good. So we put it on both. Beautiful. I mean, I, I just I just like that I can actually just change it, and um, and it's also important the benchmark. You know, it, uh, adjust the benchmark because that's. I mean, you could use the Qs and not the TQQQ or QLD. Uh, I haven't even looked at QLD, but uh, let's do both. And I'll run this one in between. Um, and then I run, let's take a look at this one. And I run it now on um, the TQQ. Wow. Um, so that doesn't look that good, to be honest. Let's do the benchmark away because we have the TQQ on a, as a benchmark. The result are definitely better, but the swings are extremely extreme. Let's put it this way. And the TQQ is going from whatever it is to 19 million down to 3 million up to 18 million down to God knows where, 10 million something. So, I mean, that's a, uh, the, the strategy itself is doing fine. And all of us would be not very happy with a drawdown that goes down to 50% with the system. But look at the TQQQ, the drawdown goes always down, and it was actually down 80% just about two years ago. Well, is it two years ago? Something like this, yeah. So uh, TQQQ is a tough one. It's a tough call, I think. But hey, we've got a system here. Dion has a system here. Let's quickly find that here. The one percenter, uh, one percent for those who has seen the one percenter. That would be a good quiz. Um, one percent a week. That's all we want, you know. One percent a week. I know that's not intraday. Where is it here? No. Nope. Oh, that's a meta strategy. Yeah, let's go here. So that should be the one percent a week, um, which comes. You don't have to take screenshots or something. I think this is a. a, a it comes within World's Lab. It's coded in C sharp. For those who are programmers, for those who are not, they can just use it. And uh, it, it is using the TQQQ. We have a setting again. Maybe I should use 1.1 um, uh, again. I'm not sure why I'm not having it. So I use 1.1. I don't like this. Well, one. in this case, it uses a limit order to get in. So the limit price is known. So that, ah, okay. So it doesn't uh, matter. Yeah. yeah in okay. Case good. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you're right. So let's, uh, this is my strategy. It's sending, this is the code. Uh, we don't have a back test yet. It comes now and um, it's doing extremely good. You can see it here. Very good, um, very solid, but also had a major, had a couple of major drawdowns. Just recently there was a yeah, big drawdown. And obviously, if the market goes down 10%, this one goes down 30%. Therefore, it's holding up pretty good. But, um, you know, there is some kind of risk involved. Something you want to look at is the uh, last positions, open positions on top. And then you see, uh, even just in, in this year, most of the trades were good, except this one, which was actually really a killer trade. Double click on it, it opens up right there. You can see it. Um, and then you see you, you bought it kind of here and then the market went down. Next Monday, you buy again and again and again, mostly winners afterwards. So yeah, that's that's another, that's a system on the TQQ that comes within World's Lab and um, that you can actually take a look at and trade if you um, are up for it. Uh, 
We actually created, I think, a meta strategy, which you might have seen there. I haven't opened it since then. So we combined the two strategies, but it's very difficult. It's very hard to beat the one uh, percent a week strategy. It's very hard. It's nearly uh, because it has such a big profit. So um, questions to all of this. You have questions to my analysis, what I look at, what I prefer, uh, number of trades. I think the, all strategies here make about four trades a month. Something you can see somewhere. Um, can't see now where, but I know it is somewhere. Um, so, yeah. And you have questions, and I'm looking at it now. I'm looking at the chat. I don't see the questions. So I think in general thinking, uh, looking at this exit, I think this was a very interesting exit. I think this is an exit that is tradable. Uh, there's a there's a way I think you can place this order. This one might be a little bit more tricky. It's doable, but it's a little bit tricky. But looking at the closing price and say, hey, is it above, you know, as it gets near to the end of the day, is it above the high or below the high? And then you can make it a call or not a call. You know, can say, yes, I'm placing the order. So that's, um, I think, but it's, it's a very interesting exit strategy because it doesn't, it's not a stop loss exit. It's not a time exit. I think I have a time exit in one of my, um strategies if not i can quickly add one which is then um sell after a number of days which is something uh, also interesting sell after n bars another thing which kind of is a stop loss kind of idea um and we we look at this um result um i know that's is that the one oh, that's on the um, so let's take this one first out, let it sleep, and we go back to um, SPY. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, if you trade on the on the queues, the queue is definitely more, it's, I'm not saying volatile, but there's a, a more action. The SPY is slower. So in this case, the SPY seems to be a good way to go. And here are the backtest results. We are at 1.8 million something. And now I wanted to show you, that's why if you're a dip buyer, adding a, a stop loss usually or a time exit or something like this usually doesn't do good. I'm adding it now, um, very easy selling after five bars. Let's take a look at the curve and I run that backtest. I would be surprised if this improves the result. No, it actually reduces the result. Um, to 1.15 million exiting after five bars. If it's not pro if it the other exit didn't go um, catch in, and the drawdown, how did the drawdown? It looks actually like the drawdown was actually improving a little bit. We had, I think we had 28, yeah, 22 percent. It was reduced, in, uh, improved the drawdown a little bit. Um, I wasn't, I wouldn't be sure whether I would trade it that way. Um, Adding to a chart and pushing to C sharp code fails to compile. Okay, adding MFI to a chart and pushing to C sharp fails to compile. Oh, that was Eugene, and um, that is for my gurus here to look at. Okay, thank you. Uh, it says missing assembly, but at the end, you see that yourself, right? Good. So talking about this exit and talking about another strategy, I'm closing it now since you guys don't have a question anymore to this one. I'm closing this. Uh, do I want to save it? No. I'm closing the pure and simple. I'm closing um, this one. And uh, because I just before this meeting, uh, I was looking at... Uh, IBS, another strategy. I think for those who follow the YouTube channel, if you don't, if you if you haven't done it yet, um, you should um, check out the YouTube channel. I mean, this is all ideas, and I'm not saying trade any of these strategies. This is all ideas. You definitely have to um, um, do your own research. You know, do your own research. Feel comfortable with whatever you do, whatever you trade, how you trade it. 
you want to go sit in front of the computer, you want to be there at 10 o'clock or whatever, um, that's totally up to you. And you have to feel comfortable with the, uh, the strategy and doing some optimization and walk forward optimization, all the things that I haven't done here. This is raw numbers, just like um, eyeballing. If you, if I look at the chart here um, and I had the two day um, uh, IBS here, this is the IBS now, the internal bar strength, which is so pure and simple that you don't even need a, uh, a software for that because it's basically say if the close is, I think in the lower 10% range, range of the high and low, um, that's when you're going to buy. And if it's above, oh, and you buy on the next buy at market, and I should probably try to buy at the close. Uh, and um, and then if it if it's above 90, if it's in the upper range, that's when you're going to sell. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. It's just using that one bar, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, it's just using this bar today, this bar here, it actually, um, if this bar is in the lower range, which it was, because it closed at 474 and the low was 473.80, so it's like $1 difference. It was very close. Uh, it was definitely below 10. And um, next day it bought. So actually you can see it actually bought higher. So maybe I should test it on um, uh, buying it um, at the close. Um, but what I wanted to do, I wanted to show that to you is, and let me open a closed one of those already. Um, and I'm too lazy to do it, as you can see in a minute. Uh, okay, yep, here we are. Put them side by side. And um, and you see here, this is the exit that we used on the MFI strategy, which was actually I think was a a major was a major ball cha uh, change in the in the game. So I drag it over, boom, that's it. I used something that I have in this strategy on the right side. I don't know whether you can, I mean, whether it's your right or left. On the right side, I just drag it over, and I put this on pause. Say, I, I don't want to test with you now. I want to test with this new exit that I found, which I can leave. Obviously, I can clone all these strategies and all that. But I just dragged this over. So I have this exit that was good on MFI. I have it now on the IBS. And now nope, I make it. Did I run it already? Yeah, I ran it. Okay, 10 years, I think. So let's make it... Um, Give it the same chance like we had the other one. I say all data, the queues, all data. Mm, I use open next bar. So it's a different one because I was using the, not using the close. So I need to use close this bar. And I used to, you need to use 1.1 because I'm now added a, another, I didn't buy at the open. So I buy at the close. So I need to uh, add it a little, uh, change it a little bit. Let's see, I have it like this run the back test, I run the back test for all the years, looks pretty good for all these, uh, what is it, 15 years. And now I deactive, I don't know, did I already deactivated it? I deactivated, activate, I had it activated. So this is the new strategy. Why does it look so um, blur? I have to check. Well, that. You've just you've disabled the condition, but you've got the sell on next bar at market close, so you're you're only getting a one bar strategy. Uh, okay. So yeah, here we are, and I I disable this whole thing. So now I say now I I this was actually actually really selling in the next bar immediately. Wow, that was actually a good result. Next bar open. Now um, I have the back test here and I'm running it now with this new exit. So if the close is greater than the high, run back test. And you see we are at 950,000. And now you are just like me, totally amazed. This is amazing. I mean, oh. yeah. I know you're all quiet now. And um, I, I know um, you wanted to cheer, but the, it's, I just, if, if ever I see a strategy like this, with this change, 
on the right, uh, sell next buy at market close, and I drag it over and it becomes this, the first thing I do is double check. I haven't done that yet. I just, this is what I've done just five, 10 minutes before the, this call. So the first thing is double check. Is it doing what I wanted it to do? So far, like this, this three trades, it's doing it. It's doing it. It's it's doing it. Uh, yeah, it actually, it buys. Um, it bought, actually, it bought next buy at market, which was here. The close was above the high exit here. Uh, it bought it here. The, MF, uh, the IBS was below. And now we didn't have a, a higher close, not yet. Um, so it is actually really, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's the what's the APR on that? Um, the APR. You know why I'm laughing actually because on the right hand side there's my uh, here up here is my uh, iPhone, and <laughs> Robert was just writing on the iPhone on Skype and as kind of in our uh, group chat there. Holy smokes! Yeah, I mean this is I don't know you know it. Uh, the APR now went to um, 15.8 roughly, whereas the benchmark is at 9.17. Um, the average profit has gone to 0 0.83, which is also a great number. Um, maximum drawdown is definitely a little bit higher than the, uh, than, oh, well, I don't know, even know. I'm thinking- but It's on the queues, it's, 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 it's the same as oh, the- Yeah, 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 it's, it's not on the spy, yeah. It has also 70% winners. Uh, it's just, you know, this change, this exit, if you go home with one thing, you know, that you want to try, I mean, definitely try this exit if you haven't done that. But if you've traded it and it's out now in the open, but this is a total game changer for this strategy. Look at the equity curve. Look at the drawdown. I mean, it did have a large drawdown here in, let's zoom in, you know, to zoom in. 38% in, in 2001, yeah. end of 2001. Um, That's so, the Qs though, right? Yeah, it's the Qs, yeah. yeah. You know, I can, I, you know, if you want to, I can go to the spies, you know. Not sure how many trades we get there, but uh, spy, and I run it here. Back test, result, equity curve, yeah. Also, I mean, the other one was at 1.8 million, somewhere here. This one is at 3.1. Let's take a look at the metrics. Uh, again, uh, we have 11%. Obviously, the uh, improvement comes by having 30% more than, or actually about, what is it, 40% more than the, the benchmark. Um, average profit 0 0.58 which is expected um, drawdown is actually just as low as it was um, as the MFI was, I, I think. So um, how many winners do we have on the positions? 72% uh, winners, which I, as I said earlier, I like that. I mean, it's just, you know, in, there is some uh, uh, extended scorecard, something many people don't know is the extended scorecard, um, which then has some interesting statistics like months, uh, maximum conse conse consecutive winners and maximum consecutive losers, also an important number. Because if you have, if you win, if you lose eight times in a row, and then you have two winners, and 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 then you lose four times, this is much better. It makes you feel much more comfortable, um, in the in the sense that you have more winners in the row. I bet to all of you, if you have twelve winners in the row. And you get another signal, signal number thirteen. You <laughs> you're gonna think about whether you want to trade this uh, uh, strategy. Uh, so that's that's where that's where you say, oh, thirteen winners in the row can't be a number fourteen and another a number fifteen. But this exit is actually, I think, uh, pretty interesting. If you guys haven't seen any, uh, you know, if you couldn't follow me, or if you uh, feel free to chat. Or maybe we have five more minutes to go. Uh, so I didn't even double that original system. I actually, uh, in combination with the IBS, I think it was pretty impressive. 
So um, shall we open up this? Anyone has to wants to ask a question in person instead of chatting? How does the software show upcoming signals when you use multiple strategies? So like a screener for manual trading. Ah, okay. Um, show upcoming when you use multiple strategies. So like a screener. Show upcoming when you use multiple for manual trading. How does that? How does the software show the upcoming? Uh, how does it show the upcoming signals on this one? I would have to use the screener for that. Um, we we can do or we can have a session for that. Um, but right now I wanted to ask about you know this strategy itself, and uh, we can come back to the other one. What is the lack coefficient? That's something that we have on this strategy. And to be honest, I oh know it's actually yeah, it's here. Um, it actually says it here, the calculation um, shows the largest trade compares to the average trade. There's a calculation for that. Things that are not very clear, uh, they have a, a, a decent description or a good description over here where you can actually get the, the reasoning behind it. Uh, Uwe, sorry, but we have to postpone that one um, and we can do it in a German session or even on the session with Dr. Koch, um, if you want to. I'm not sure, I think you are on it. Um, so uh, other questions about the strategy or this strategies. There's a couple of strategies, I mean, all of that, the IBS system, I think it, it is published. If not, it's very easy to uh, reproduce. The only thing that you need to have or understand is that if you use the new exit that I haven't published in that uh, YouTube channel, um, then you uh, would have to have the power pack or the premium version of Worlds Lab, which includes all these extensions that are really fantastic. Um, I wanted to do something since I don't see any questions, positions, and um, and I make and increase it. Something is interesting here. Like you, you have the day of week, the day at the months of the year, the day of months, where you can actually sort by, and then you can see did I have more winners on certain days of the week. So, um, and another thing, obviously, is the MFE. But this one is uh, really, um, you see the results here, pretty amazing results have we have we ever had a session about using entries generated by a backtested system but entering with options is that no that one we haven't had it's something that we always talk about in the team and i'm not sure robert whether you do it because robert is an option guy um you know the problem is i think robert you you did create something where he's trading kind of an alpha or something uh, we always discuss it in within the team. It is, I think, that for me, the problem is the bid ask in option. Even if it's small, do you get the execution? If I get a signal on the IBS, which is easy because I buy at market, so I have the whole day to, to buy, uh, to, to look at the price. But I am, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, I think. Sorry, I can't see the question. What's, what's the question about options? Have we ever had a session, a webinar, I guess, about using entries generated by a backtester system, but entering with a, with options instead? Oh, well, we, I mean, we could do that. That's that's not really a problem. I mean, so yeah, you, we could we could set one up. Yeah. So we can we can have a session, and as well, that would be something that Robert has. Yeah, I, you know, I you know, the, the thing about backtesting with options is, uh, you know, the big thing is. Is having the data, having you know uh, the contract data, and which is tough to get for historically. Uh, you know, we get around that using the synthetics, the synthetic contracts, which are you know just invented by the the, the Black Scholes um, calculations. And you know, of course, the, the problem with that is that you kind of you kind of need to know what the volatility is at all the, at all times, and which. You know, the estimate of volatility using historic volatility isn't usually that good. So, you know, but it, you can get close. I think, um, 
And <laughs> but as far as an intraday uh, strategy, we can we can do that. I think you know. I think the question was more than uh, let's say this system, and now you want to yeah. buy option instead of um, mm-hmm. you know like having an order placed on the yeah. options. Uh, that's how I understand it. Oh it's well, kind of- yeah, yeah. I mean, we we can't. Okay, we don't have any blocks that can do that. So I mean, that's it's you know it, it gets to you know the coding gets a little bit more tricky, right? So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, here, here it's easy. You buy the stock tomorrow, you know. Or, right, but then, yeah, of course, with yeah. the option, you have to pick the contract, you know, the expiration, the, you know, the, the basic the, the strike, you know. It's, yeah. So all that is part of the strategy. And so it gets a lot more complex. But is it possible? Of course, yeah, you can do it. Right, you can do it right now if you, if uh, we have a, there's a big blog on the op, on our, on our website. There's, um, if you go to our blog, there's a big page on, uh, programming option strategies, and you know you can kind get a feel for it. But you know it's a little bit complex. So if you're not used to coding, that it might be a little bit over your head. But you know, um, yeah. Here's here's another question, and I think we we're about to close. Unless you guys don't type, if you type another question, we're going to ask answer it. But I mean, I, you guys might have um, something going on. We scheduled for an hour. I can go on for a little bit. Um, here's a question. Is there a way to refresh published strategies? I do not see the IB strategy in YouTube folder. Uh, okay, uh, you saw it on my YouTube folder, the, and you talk about the IBS strategy, I think. Uh, I, you know, I, it should be. It's probably here in the WhatsApp dot com published strategies if i haven't published it there um then i should publish it oh there's i see a couple of really good strategies um but uh yeah i can i can publish it here uh, if you want i can even publish this one here or the original so dropping off no thanks yeah thanks tim uh, it's good uh yeah, we'll do more. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to publish the original IBS strategy, which is actually like this, as you remember. And I'll leave the uh, secret topic, uh, uh, the secret um, uh, uh, game changer. I'll leave it here for uh, you guys. So if you want to publish it. So this is what I will publish, and you have to uh, do this one yourself then. Um, yeah, other than that, thanks a lot for coming. Um, I hope you could learn a little bit and uh, see a little bit uh, how how I backtest and, uh, you know, I haven't touched optimization for quite a while because I think these strategies go, um, go pretty good without doing anything. But obviously you should not optimize, but do parameter stability testing, uh, how I call it, test whether I just happen to pick here uh, two good parameters. I just thought they make sense in a way. And, um, you know, I remember when I uh, published the IBS originally about 20 years ago in the Active Trader magazine, I was using a totally different number. Can't remember whether I did it on purpose or not, to be honest. <laughs> I wasn't that good. But, uh, uh, you know, just looking at the at, at the chart, it's kind of it kind of made made kind of sense that you always get like a good spot. I wouldn't probably spot this one. But, um, you know, you see, oh, whenever it's down here, it kind of looks like it's going up then afterwards. It's kind of an eyeballing thing. So, yeah. So uh, thanks a lot for joining and uh, hope you could learn a little bit and see a little bit. And if you have further questions, uh, feel free either to ask on YouTube or on our um, forum. It would be really great. It would be awesome. Thanks for joining and talk to you guys then.